good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video True, and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas, the worst courier. Well, last time, we made it here to Novak, and more importantly, to Helios 1, where, yes indeed, our low intelligence character, poor old useless Steve, he did struggle a little bit. But we did get one rather good thing out of it, which is, um, we decided to arm a massive, terrifying satellite doom weapon. So naturally, we could just head to Vegas and sort that out immediately, but no. No, 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 no. There's a much more fun, interesting way we can actually resolve that situation that actually leads to, uh, as I mentioned last week, one of my favourite voice lines in all of New Vegas. And quite frankly, if even 1% of you have ever seen this before, I will be amazed. You're in for a treat today. So first off, I need to go and make some new friends. Right, back to Helios 1, keep your distance, don't need any trouble with any of that nonsense. Just stick around the edge of it, we're just going to head straight into the dry lake bed, take out some ants if we have to, but should need to take care of that much to be honest. Then we're moving straight on down towards Vegas. Oh, and just look at my beautiful, beautiful handiwork there, lovely seeing Helios 1 all lit up. Yeah, there's a handful of ants in the way, but honestly, yeah, service rifle will make short work of them, no problem whatsoever. So, uh, any more? Nope, back to hidden. They're only worth 10 XP, though. It's probably not worth the ammo to deal with them unless they're in my way. Unless, of course, they happen to generate... No. Fire ant meat is uh, kind of bad, unfortunately. Fire ant nectar, though. Never say no to that. That's decent. That's some good stuff. Pass by the Lonesome Drifter, not much we can do with him yet, so we'll just leave him be. Instead, we want to make our way straight over to the 188 Trading Post. Absolutely lovely. Together with, I believe, one star bottle cap right there, I'll never say no. And a couple of Sunset Sarsaparillas that are just, like, for free, apparently. Never know when you're going to get lucky there, but nope, unfortunately, looks like uh, two bottle caps on that occasion. And of course, our brand new friend. Hello there, Veronica. No offense, but you look like you've traveled a long way down some bad roads. Where'd you come from? Little town called Good Springs, but I really wouldn't visit it. It kind of, um, well, let's just say it's never going to recover from my last visit. I had a run-in with this group calling themselves the Brotherhood of Steel. Pretty strange bunch. Do you know anything about them? And if you happen to have very low intelligence, or rather, well, lower than six, it's kind of, quite frankly, a bit weird that someone with intelligence five can say this, but it does feel like something useless Steve would say. Yes, they can shoot lasers from their eyes. I'm absolutely sure that's true. Wow. I've got to admit, you have completely defied my first impression of you. Eye lasers. I'll be sure and look out for that next time. Any other juicy bits of intel? Sadly, I don't think you can actually say anything else catastrophically stupid, but uh, no, they seem fine. I'm totally cool with them 100%. Do they? Oh, that's a relief. I wasn't so sure myself. Protecting people from technology seems like a big job for such a small group. Hey, so where are you headed anyway? Honestly, kind of all over the shop, but at some point we'll go visit Hoover Dam, sure. Huh, just on your way to do a little heavily fortified sightseeing. Kind of a thrill seeker, aren't you? So, now we have got ourselves a Veronica, and I want to actually kick off her little personal quest as fast as possible. Basically, all she wants to do is see various societies in action, which is much easier to do if you actually pick her up at the beginning of the game, because, yeah, various characters, when you run into them for the very first time, they'll say something that triggers one of her speeches, because you've got to get three Veronica points to begin, I could make you care. But sometimes if you've already spoken to a character, they won't say the dialogue that kind of makes her respond again, because... I've never been sure precisely how Veronica works, but like, it seems to be within a certain location, she has to hear a certain thing. So for example, Julie Farkas over in The Followers, she actually says one of the lines the first time you run into her, but sometimes Veronica just responds anyway, even if you have spoken to Julie before, just from like one of the other doctors. So whatever the precise line is, someone else repeats it. It's very odd. But anyway, because we've picked up Veronica nice and early, this is going to be relatively simple to do. On my way past this part of the world though, yeah, Repcon headquarters, as some of you pointed out, I did sort of accidentally forget something in here. It wasn't even well hidden either, I literally just forgot it was there. Yep, there's actually a skill book in the room you get, the Q35. It's right here on top of the safe, together with, uh, yeah, a giant pile of uh, microfusion cells. Now, hang on. Check my weight and ammo levels, because uh, these things weigh quite a lot, actually. See, I've only got uh, 84 right now. Yeah, weight of 8.4. So, uh, 
Every single time I pick up, say, 20 of those, that's another two weights. They weigh 0.1 each, which is... Uh, that's a lot. That's an awful lot. Check the safe as well. I believe that's actually got itself... I thought a stealth boy, but nope, I'm misremembering. No matter. I shan't say no to some free meds diddly diddly day. So I'm not going to take all of that, but remember it's there because uh, that's a hell of a lot of microfusion cells I might need at some point. And that gets energy weapons up to an utterly impressive 28. Marvellous. Right, actual next objective, uh, McCarran. We need to go and visit McCarran, but I may as well tag, uh, yeah, the sacked caravan on my way past. Take out a couple of fiends, some good XP from doing all of that nonsense. So yeah, we got a bit of XP on route. And on this occasion, I didn't even need to bother kicking off a fight. The NCR's done it by themselves. Absolutely lovely. Right, so, get myself out a gun here. Probably not that gun, by the way. That gun will do better. You coming at me, by the way. I wouldn't. Veronica, please. Oh, bloody hell, Veronica. Yes, Veronica can uh, very much just punch people in the face. Excuse me. Stop moving for a second so I can shoot you in the face. And yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Now I've got over 25 in my energy skill. I can really start nailing these people in the face, which is good. And they drop some good stuff themselves. Actually, energy weaponry. So uh, yeah, I'll take micro. Wow. Microfusion cell 40. That's a lot. But you can see that does weigh four just by itself. Still, laser rifle. I will not say no. That's some good stuff right there. And more to plasma rifle. Zero condition, but that kind of doesn't matter. It's very useful because I can just use that to maintain my Q35. Which is still in pretty damn good condition, but I may as well just maintain it a little bit while I'm passing by. And while I wouldn't normally bother coming in here, actually while I think about it, Veronica. Veronica, do not go. Veronica, okay, you can go hunting for that individual. That's fine. Uh, yes, allied technologies. Normally, you wouldn't really bother coming in here, to be honest, because, yes, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of ants, but luckily, Veronica can actually uh, draw a bit of attention, which is good. Also, she's really damn good at punching. <laughs> really good at... Okay, you decided to follow me inside, did you? I mean, fair enough, I suppose. Right, probably prioritise taking out the person who's got the, uh, the actual, you know, laser weaponry rather than a pool cue. Oh, bloody hell, this is... This is why we don't bother with... Okay, hang on. Just just let me put in... Let me put in some better ammo. Armor piercing. That'll do the job a little bit better. And once we can get past your armor... There we go. Much more efficient. And you've got a crippled head too. Not great, but it'll do. And hold, hold still for one second, please. There we go. Good night. Gonna go over to the actual plasma pistol, in fact. Plasma pistol is pretty darn good. This place is just uh, sort of uh, swimming in ants. But yeah, basic plasma pistol should work pretty well. And if we just actually take out the head and whatnot, yeah, there we go. Plasma pistol. Solid, solid weapon once you've started modding it. Help myself to another star bottle cap. Two, in fact, not bad. You know, I'd never noticed this before. There's so many empty bottles here. And two caps on the desk. This person was clearly super into the promotion. That's really cute. And another star off one of those bottles. Absolutely love it. This, by the way, is why basically for most of this run, I will be banning companions from uh, coming along. Because they do make life a little bit uh, too easy. It's almost ridiculous how strong Veronica is. And Boone as well. Veronica and Boone are both ridiculous. Luckily, yes. Now I've actually got... Ow, ow, ow. Leave me alone. He was going to die to the plasma thing. Veronica's just, oh, oh, bloody hell. Right, okay, this is, this is fine. Didn't realise you were going to be there. Yeah, the plasma pistol has got this regardless. You see, didn't even need Veronica. She was just punching a corpse there. More ant nectar. Take all of that. Here's what I'm after. Very bloody difficult to spot because of the colour. Yep, tails of a junk town jerky vendor. Beautiful. I mean, I know Barter's pretty much insignificant in this run, but uh, screw it, every little helps. And a couple of fights breaking out as I pass by. The NCR should win that one fairly handily. They normally do anyway, so uh, let's see how you're getting on over there. Yeah, they're both still alive for the time being. The problem is, because there's two of them, eventually they'll cripple something. The person will flinch. They'll just keep shooting while they're flinching. Then they'll probably cripple something else. So it's nice and simple for these guys to win. Sadly, nothing dramatic on you on this occasion. Just a cowboy repeater. Oh yeah, especially as their friend spawned in with uh, a pool cue. On occasion, these guys just happen to draw some laser or plasma weapons out of a hat. So uh, if that happens, obviously they've got a much better chance. 
Anyway, with a bit of help from the NCR, they can help mop up all sorts of bits and pieces. Yeah, we got ourselves McCarran. Also, uh, do bear in mind, I am playing with uh, modified hardcore rules, meaning if Veronica runs out of health, she doesn't just uh, faint. She dies. She can properly die. So she may hit like a truck, but uh, she could in theory die too. So we've got to be at least a little bit careful with her. Right, we can come back and loot this place later. Not a high priority at the minute instead. Yep, focusing very much on Veronica. Because yeah, McCarran is, I believe, the only place where she can actually get two of her Veronica points for her quest in a single room. So first, just step into the main terminal. There's a lot more troops here than we thought. No wonder we couldn't hold Helios 1. And there we go. That's one Veronica point. She has now actually observed the NCR. But... There's another one. Just head straight through the door here to go and run into the good doctor. A pleasure to meet you. I'm Dr. Thomas Hildern, Director of Operations, OSI East. I presume you're here about Vault 22? And of course, we may as well pick up the Vault 22 quest while we're passing by, but we're not going to be going over to that just yet. The important thing is, we just need to hear him talk about... OSI, scientific experiments, diddly diddly d, whatever the exact word is that triggers Veronica. Even the stupid NCR is investing in new research. We're getting left in the dust. And there we go. Now she's aware of the NCR science program, which counts as a separate trigger. But if you happen to have spoken to Dr. Hildur even one time before you meet Veronica or bring her along, you simply can't get that trigger. And of course, Angela wants me to help her friend in the vault. Diddly diddly d. We'll get to that if we go to visit Vault 22. As I say, plenty of quests we could do here. And if I wanted to, because of course I'm dressed as an NCR member, I could just walk onto the monorail, head straight to the strip. But more important business to do with Veronica first. Here we go. Just wander up the road to Freeside. Do it at night if you can, by the way, because it's much prettier. Someone's uh, shooting us, by the way. Nope, never mind. Doesn't involve us in the slightest. Just a fiend versus a merchant or something. And specifically, we want to go visiting the old Mormon fort. I think I mentioned earlier, Julie, we need to have a quick word with Julie Farkas. Though actually, just for fun, it's night, so she's asleep at the minute inside her room over there. So sometimes uh, you can make Veronica just react just by speaking to the doctor. So uh, I'm just going to see if I can make that happen. It's very hard to get to repeat. I have no idea exactly what triggers it. But yeah, if I just basically spam speaking to these doctors, we might get Veronica to respond to Julie Farkas, even though she's not here. No, nope, bad luck on this occasion. Veronica has not reacted to any of them. So yeah, it's kind of uh, it's hard to predict. Veronica's mechanics are... A mystery even to me. So let's just go find uh, Julie. I believe she's having a nap in here. Right, Julie. Up you get. I need you to say a very specific voice line to me. Are you here to drop off medical supplies? Leave them with the rest in the middle of the courtyard. That should be literally it. If I just basically leave the conversation right now, that should trigger Veronica. Veronica, you're embarrassing me in front of the people right now. Can't help but be impressed with what they're doing here. Aha! There we go. I think that was that was what I needed to hear. Hey, you got a second? Yep, there we go. Good, it was a very short response. They're kind of be impressed. That's literally a lot. So, okay, now she wants me to join up and help with the Brotherhood's business. The Brotherhood is failing. I've always known that. If we don't change course, we're going to fall apart or fade away. But until recently, I haven't understood where we went wrong or how to fix it. I think I need to go home. Alright, so now we can get into the Brotherhood bunker. Nice and easy, no bomb collars or any of that nonsense. And so begins, I could make you care. Lovely. Here we go, Hidden Valley. Marvellous. Yeah, I just walked here straight from Sloan. Fun thing, by the way, there's a couple of uh, map markers in New Vegas that are a bit, um unusual. Like, for example, Prim. The first time you discover Prim, you can immediately fast travel to Prim and teleport to the far side of the bridge, thereby bypassing the mines. Similar sort of principle here. If I just walk into Hidden Valley, there'll be like scorpions all over the shop and I'll be on the far side of it from the actual Brotherhood bunker. But despite the fact I've only just discovered the damn thing, if I now fast travel to it immediately, I actually teleport to significantly inside it. Handful of little scorpions here, but in all fairness, they've got literally no damage threshold. So uh, yeah, rapid fire weapon, I 10 millimeter absolutely tears them to shreds. Not bad in the old XP though, not bad at all. Because yeah, obviously the nice thing about this fast travel location is it has to be close by to the bunker because you want to be able to travel here to actually hit the bunker. The Hidden Valley technically begins all the way over there. So yeah, the actual point where you land is miles away from the point where you can actually trigger it. 
And now Veronica can get me inside, no trouble whatsoever. I'd like a large atomic shake and a double Brahmin burger. And easy on the agave sauce this time. We gave you a password, Veronica. It's for your safety. I know where you live, Ramos. Open up. <sighs> for Pete's sake, opening up. Welcome back, Veronica. I love how no one has time for Veronica's nonsense. It's great. Right. In we go. Veronica now wants to have a chat with the Elder. And yes, indeed, we can uh, pick up with that whole super weapon business. And this place is just sexy looting central, which is why it's nice to actually come here a bit early. Because just look at the number of containers. And plenty of them have got themselves, uh, yeah, laser pistols. They're worth a decent amount of money. Microfusion cells, very, very useful indeed. Giant piles of energy cells and bottle caps. I'll be having all of that, thank you. I'm pretty sure I'm only being perceived by, yep, Veronica. So that's no problem whatsoever. Together with more of that nonsense. Energy cells are fairly light, all things considered. And yep, yeah, just more and more ammo. So if you need microfusion cells, uh, there's just so many around here. Yeah, I think about 240 just in this one dorm alone. Anyway, not much we can do until we've gone to see the Elder. So, Veronica, would you like to go first and take care of your business? Hello, Veronica. How goes your mission? We'll know in a second. I wanted to talk to you. Veronica, tell me this isn't about... Yes, goddammit, it is. But you're gonna hear me out this time. We've been through this. The things I've seen now, other groups succeeding where we fail, it's not too late for us. We've outlasted the end of the world. We'll outlast these upstarts. Waiting in a hole for everyone else to die. If we must. This is a dead end for us. I see no evidence of that. Nor do I see anyone out there with a solution to our problems. How could you? You're too scared to look. Let's go. We're wasting our time. Okay, I will join you in dramatically walking out in a second. I've just got my own business with the Elder first, actually. And yes, indeed, so begins possibly the longest mission in the entire game, where you've got to find, yeah, the three paladins, then three scouts, then three components. But actually, I've already picked one of them up. That was actually the tape I got off the top floor of the Repcon headquarters. While that is disheartening news, there remains hope that the other two patrols may still be found alive. They definitely won't be. And so begins at Still in the Dark Marvelous. Now we might well take care of a bit of that. There's one particularly interesting bit that actually affects my character, but I could make you care. Let's stay focused on that for a second, Veronica. I'd slap him around, but he stood at my parents' wedding. Plus, he used to make excuses to get me out of my punishment when I'd slept through head scribe Taggart's lectures. Figure I owe him for that. <sighs> he means well. Go on, Veronica. What do you want me to do next? I'm not giving up. He wants evidence, but he'll never go looking for it. He's scared I'm right. He'll never listen unless I hold the proof right in front of his face. And do carry on. What would you like us to bring him, Veronica? I don't know. I don't know. We need something that shows the Brotherhood will fail. Or that it can do better a different way. The only thing that gets his attention is technology. Huh. Maybe Father Elijah had the right idea. Father Elijah, you say? Our elder before McNamara, he had a nose for recovering lost technology. He'd send scribes out into the desert, chasing whatever leads he found. There were a few he only trusted me with. I can think of at least one that'd prove my point, if it still exists. There's a comm terminal not too far from here I'd use to access messages from him. If we go there, I can pull up his research on it. And yes, indeed, of course, Father Elijah, we could run into him in uh, Dead Money. And also, Veronica's girlfriend, though there's no way to actually put two and two together and tell Veronica about that. I always did find it very, very odd indeed that, yes, there's no way for Veronica to really gain any closure on that front. Bit of a shame, really. And the other advantage of talking to the Elder already, the shop will actually sell to me. The word came down from the Elder that I'm to offer you some of our lesser wares, as if I didn't have other matters on my mind. I mean, she's hardly thrilled about seeing me, but screw it, she will now act as a shop. And she does genuinely have some pretty damn good stuff too. Decent amount of money, a thousand caps, not bad. Grease Lightning, unique variant of Power Fist. Displacer Gloves, you don't generally see those showing up this early, and they're honestly not even that expensive, that's not bad at all. Anything that's 12.7mm, that's good stuff too. Fat Man, you can't get that from Gunrunner's Arsenal, the robot. 
But uh, yeah, nice to see you on here as well, all things considered. Some good stuff in general. Unfortunately, Father Elijah's shack is very close by to Novak, Gibson Scrapyard, lots of areas we've already been into. So yeah, it's a very short jog around the corner. Obviously, of course, the shack's here because Elijah was obsessed with Helios 1 and the potential satellite weaponry attached to it. So uh, normally, of course, you wouldn't have access to the satellite weaponry because I imagine most people, when they complete this quest, go for the send the power to everyone option because it's the only option that gets you a skill book, gets you plenty of prestige with the followers, which could be pretty useful. And honestly, skill books are just great. So objectively, the best solution is to just send the power to everybody. So I imagine most people don't really bother with uh, the whole Archimedes 2 thing. But uh, if you do, yeah, we're on the right track for a really, really damn fun little Easter egg. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, yeah, this is the one I was thinking of. The pulse gun. Although, maybe the rangefinder could work too. And it looks like the NCR was onto some miracle farming technology. So yes indeed, her first choice is in fact the pulse gun. Electromagnetic weapon from before the Great War. Experimental. It never saw mass production. But they were building it as a countermeasure to power armor, which they feared the Chinese were developing. Supposedly a prototype was being housed at Nellis. Imagine what it could do to the Brotherhood. We'd be on equal footing with any idiot with a gun. And it is not actually at Nellis. No, 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 no. It's in Vault 34, which I am most definitely not capable of going inside. Not a flippin' chance. Farming technology is Vault 22. We chatted to Hildern about that already. But the rangefinder, the big one. It's a targeting device for some kind of doomsday weapon based at Helios 1. It was lost sometime after the war. We held Helios 1 for a time. Lost a lot of people defending it. Too many. All for this weapon they never got working. If it turns out to be a dud, it should show how flawed our goals have been. Father Elijah said he thinks a scavenger might have sold it on the strip. So yes indeed, she actually wants it to be a dud. But uh, bad news Veronica, I sort of fixed it. Even if it did work, it'd be under NCR control now. So it'd either prove our goals are wrong, or we're incapable of pursuing them. There's a pawn shop in Outer Vegas we could check, and I've heard of a gift shop in the Strip that deals in pre-war antiques. Alright, so let's go find that, because yes indeed, we're basically going to uh, completely prove the opposite of what Veronica wants us to prove. You know, I've done this option so infrequently, I've kind of forgotten how it goes, so yes indeed, the gift shop, Vault 21 gift shop, obviously we need to go into the Strip for that, so we can just go via the NCR, no problem whatsoever, but uh, yeah, it also says uh, visit the pawn shop in Freeside, yet clearly it doesn't actually mean like, you know, Mick and Ralph's. It means the pawn shop over here, which is not in Freeside, but screw it, I guess we're going over here. Ah yes, and while we're passing by, we've got ourselves Vicky and Vance's shack here, the Wind's Hideout. And yeah, they've got a very hard locked safe, so uh, not much I can really do with that. Have you actually got yourselves a... Uh a key for that, by the way. I think they've got a key for that. So, yeah, normally you try and, like, you know, talk them out of their stupid heist. Because they're going to absolutely die. But I can't do that, so I'm just going to murder them. Now, I'm hoping this is going to be enough ammo in one round for the job. So, just go for that, and you're already in a bit of trouble. Veronica, if you could just take out him while I take out her, that'd be brilliant. Right, one, two, three, good, you go down, and your gun is completely terrible. Right, good, you're in a lot of trouble, actually. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try and disable your arm, if at all possible. Uh, no, sadly not a good shot. Fine, we'll just go for that arm, that should still be a cripple. That's enough to distract him temporarily, and then he's just sort of not doing anything. I think Veronica punches the life out of him. Good, I really hope one of you's got, like, a... Uh, a key on you also. Ooh, Vance's lucky hat, which weirdly doesn't actually make your luck go up, but whatever. No, they didn't actually um have a key on them at all. I just murdered them for no reason. I've given the bonnet to Veronica, but sadly she will not put it on. Right, here we go. Unexpected trip to Westside. And there we go. One pawn shop. It has been so long since I've done it this way. I can't even remember what he has to say about this. And yes, indeed, an antique rangefinder. That's what I'm after. Antique rangefinder? Trying to think of something that'd be more worthless. Maybe an 
antique horoscope or an antique sandwich. I'll tell you something. Good luck finding that thing. But if you do find it, don't waste your time trying to sell it to me. Okay, so that was useless. Though on the plus side, yes, Miguel is one of the fun little conversations where uh, you do have slightly uh, misformatted text if you happen to be low intelligence. So, uh, yes indeed, me buy things, Miguel. Of course. Sadly, he doesn't have anything special to say back to you. Right, with the aid of a disguise, over to the strip we go via the NCR monorail, because apparently we need to go and have a chat to the Vault 21 gift shop. And here we go, the strip at night, absolutely flipping beautiful. And of course, don't forget, free magazines in every single one of these containers. Now that's good, because magazines are weightless and a very good way of boosting skills, which is particularly useful when your skills are terrible. Alright Sarah, me and you need to have a chat about the rangefinder. And here we go, any chance you're more useful than Miguel was? Wow, I wish I had more of them. All this interest to be my biggest seller. I sold it to a man not too long ago. Real twitchy, nervous sort of guy. Kind of seemed like he was wigging out about something. Had a funny collar on. I wanted to ask him about it, but I figured maybe I'd regret asking. People are weird around here. And of course, yes indeed, we know that Father Elijah has a bit of an interest in bomb collars because of dead money. Well, it was metal and kind of thick. First I thought he'd come from Gamora, but they're more into leather there. Didn't look comfortable. He kept reaching up like he was going to itch it, but he always stopped himself. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Probably not Father Elijah himself though, instead yes, someone being held under threat of explosion by him. No, but I know where he was going. He asked me if I knew of any place where he could hide out for a while. Wanted somewhere with concrete walls. Something about airwaves, I forget. But I guess he spent all his money on the rangefinder because he said it had to be somewhere free to stay. And go on, Sarah, what did you tell him? I said I didn't know about anything like that around here, but if he wanted to live for free, a lot of people do that in Freeside. I know there's a concrete building there across from Mick and Ralph's. No ceiling, but I think it still counts. Went up there one time to try and, you know, beat my neighbors in the biz. But, you know, I don't think they took me very seriously. And go on, tell me a bit more about the individual. Oh, he was pretty average, I'd say. Average height, average age, dark hair, beard of some kind. Not particularly helpful on that front, at least. But yes, indeed. Fun little lead there, so let's pick up with that. So, just over the street from Mick and Ralph, here we go. Concrete building, person vaguely hoping that they might be, you know, a bit unexplodable, as long as they were hiding in this sort of an area. And tragically, they were most certainly not unexplodable, but uh, with the wrench, yes indeed, trying to get the bomb collar off. So with the benefit of hindsight, and also, yeah, if you did actually uh, decide to enter the Brotherhood without Veronica, so they slapped a bomb collar on you, together with dead money, you can learn a little bit about what's going on there, and... Uh, Okay, destroyed collar. Actually, wait five, that's pretty heavy. And now we come to my favourite line of dialogue in the entire game, which is wonderful. So, I've just made a small alteration to my character. I've just boosted my intelligence to the level it would normally be, i.e. nice and high. So in which case, if you speak to the vagrant here... Huh? And then just tell him you're looking for someone carrying a gun... <laughs> Ooh... <laughs> Okay, so not a great response there, but 10 caps are yours if you just point me in the right direction, sir. Kids run by sometimes. And there we go. We get the information we need. We're supposed to be finding some kids. However, if I speak to him normally as useless Steve, there we go. Intelligence back to how it should be. The conversation plays out very, very differently. If you talk to the vagrant with low intelligence, huh? then you have the option to say, pardon, but have you seen any pre-war firearm antiquities of late? And if you do so, this is the response you get. Friend, not a few minutes ago I chanced upon a pair of destitute orphans grappling over just such an item. If you cover the area methodically, I'm quite certain you'll happen upon them with only the most insubstantial of delays. Be well, and do try and avoid the tragic path of the sot that led me to my present infirmities and spiritual woes. 
I love that line so damn much, and I bet the vast majority of you have never seen it before. This random vagrant who, 99% of the time, doesn't say anything. The guy's not got a name, if you try and speak to him he just utters, you know, generic dialogue, if anything at all. If you do this quest with a normal intelligence, then you get no insight into him whatsoever, but a low intelligence character gets to have a deep and meaningful conversation, a meeting of not so great minds if you will. Fare thee well. And he says fare thee well when you say goodbye, I love this guy. That's actually one of my favourite lines of dialogue in the entire game. I just love that vagrant so, so damn much. Now, uh, we do have a small problem, which is, yes indeed, obviously I know where the rangefinder is. The rangefinder is located in the possession of this kit. So, hmm, stealing it's going to be tricky. Quite tricky. I could speak to him, hang on, yes, there it is. Wait, 15. Oh, I'd forgotten it was so bloody heavy, actually. This is unlikely to work. I'm trying to remember what I actually need to actually get it off him without paying ridiculous amounts. So, yeah, I've got barter of 15 right now. I can get that up to... Hang on, I'm just going to have a chat with him. Because I can't remember. There it is on his belt right now. Oh, darn it. Yes, barter of 45 to buy it at a reasonable cost. Otherwise, you need to spend a thousand caps or... You need to steal it, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get away with that because it's quite heavy and item weight affects chance to steal and my stealth is appalling. Okay, what could I do here? I could boost up my barter by 10 using the gear I've got, another 10 using the magazine, that's 31. Then if I was to pile, hang on, okay, at that point I'm, yeah, not too far away, all things considered. That's, hmm, I'd need to boost my charisma by eight after that point. No, not a chance. I'd kind of forgotten what the Ant Nectar did, but that actually lowers charisma, not actually uh, boosting it. And the Fire Ant Nectar, that's your agility up at a cost of intelligence. So, uh, unfortunately, rather than just spending the next, like, you know, 20 minutes just trying to steal it over and over and over again... I'm just going to pay him the money. You know what? I've never even paid him the money before. I don't even know what he says. So, I've got the money. Here, have a thousand caps. I mean, a thousand caps, that's enough for this kid to get off the street and set himself up right with a new home, education, guns, whatever. Either of the above, maybe all of the above. Like, you know what? Let's see what bloody happens. You mean it? Wow. Thanks. I bet me and Stacy can get something real cool at Mick and Ralph's with that. You could buy a house, you cocky... Never mind. Okay, we've got well, the thing. Good thing the safety was on. And yes, indeed, as Veronica does point out, the reason he didn't just nuke Stacy from orbit is because the safety was in fact on. So, I've now got myself a rangefinder with one charge. Because yes, you get one charge per 24 hours. Now, it's very important to me that Veronica sees that this gun actually works. So we got ourselves, yeah, a couple of good candidates over here. Because basically, all you do is aim the gun and say, I want this area to be nuked from orbit, if you'd be so kind. So we're just going to uh, lock that down. And then give it a moment. Lovely. So, those guys are very dead. And I'm also vilified by the powder gangers. And also that guy was, oh, you were just outside the blast radius. Bloody lucky. Not that lucky, mind, if you just give me... Uh, one second to get out. That'll do. Right, we'll just put some plasma over there in a second. Beautiful, you've melted. Okay, so the way that gun actually works is basically it does a tiny, tiny amount of damage at the exact point it hits. And then in a splash radius around it, it does, I believe, 150 flat energy weapon damage that is modified by your energy weapon skill. So, higher the skill, the more the bonus damage. I don't believe it's impacted by any of the perks that actually boost splash damage because it is not an explosive weapon, it's an energy weapon. So, a bit unfortunate, but what can you do? In fact, speaking of which, I'm going to be honest, I'm feeling energy weapons more than I'm feeling guns right now because guns are big and heavy and made of metal, which is why the strength requirements tend to be a bit on the high side. Energy weapons, meanwhile, tend to be a lot lighter because they're made of plastic, but the downside is the ammo tends to be a bit heavy. But honestly, energy weapons are probably my better bet. 
I should really start boosting speech up too. Like, uh, speech at 25, uh, therefore can be boosted to 35 with magazines. Uh, that's not bad. Then lockpick 30, that's only 10 away from me being able to hit 50. Those are important abilities. Yeah, I'll take that. That's pretty good. Also, the weapon appears to be charged again. Which I assume means we just passed the time of day when it recharges itself. So, hang on. I'll gladly help myself to a stim pack. Never say no to that. But yeah, if you're going to try and get this weapon, do try and rush to it in the early game. Because obviously, because it's doing that flat 150 damage against early game enemies, it's really, really damn good. But as the game goes on, it becomes less and less effective. But now I just want to know how the conversation goes, because yes, the whole reason Veronica wanted me to do this was she wanted to prove that Helios 1 had never been worth trying to hold on to in the first place, and dilly dilly dee. And basically, I am going to deliver a completely functional, actually working super weapon that is charged into their hands. So I've no idea how he's going to say, no, this is a terrible thing. Obviously, we don't want the giant Doom super weapon against which the NCR has no defense whatsoever that has now been fixed so it can be fired once a day for the rest of time due to a bloody renewable power supply, but uh, somehow he's going to justify thinking this is not cool. All right, Veronica, let's see how this is going to flipping go. I brought you a present. We unlocked the secret of Helios 1. What? Wonderful news. No, it's not. Archimedes 2 is an orbital laser, effective only outdoors in a limited radius and requiring a long recharge. In the hands of the enemy. They'd be marginally more effective. We lost most of the chapter defending glorified artillery. We couldn't have known. We fought for what we believed in. And nearly died for it. Tomorrow, you do it all over again, having learned nothing. Are you trying to shame me? I'm trying to open your eyes. We need to engage the outside world. We can't win without new recruits. What does the Codex say? A bunch of close-minded bullshit. We do not help them or let them in. But... We keep knowledge they must never have. Give it a chance. For me. I can't stay here and watch us waste away. I'm sorry. We'll die out. <sighs> I know. Come on. I can't listen to this anymore. I mean, I'd say Veronica's being excessively harsh to the Helios 1 super weapon, but she's kind of not. To be honest, while it's a fun weapon and situationally it can be very fun indeed, yeah, it's not actually that useful, it's not actually that powerful, and uh, yeah, a single charge a day is a bit of a problem. Okay, fair enough. You gave a good account of why this thing is not so great. And of course, that leads to the big choice for Veronica. Now, obviously, you'd normally be doing whatever you think's better for her, but... Uh, on this occasion, if you tell her to stay, you'll be confronted by some people who don't like her outside. In which case, you either talk them down, which I physically can't do, or you have to fight them. If you tell her to leave, however, you can postpone the moment you have to fight the Brotherhood, which is good, because I'd like to leave this bunker without dying. So, I basically have no choice but to tell her to leave. There's no getting around that, is there? What would my life be like here, knowing what's to come? They're not going to like this. We're given a chance when we're young to choose whether to stay. If we do, it's supposed to be for life. But they haven't left me any choice. It's this or a lifetime of scavenging and watching my friends die and losing battles. I guess it's settled then. Let's get going. I'd like to get my mind off all this. And some fresh air would do me some good right about now. Alright, so there we go. That's, well, actually, that's not I Could Make You Care Complete. Because I've asked her to leave, it does extend ever so slightly. And now, rather cruelly, I'd say, having basically persuaded Veronica not to work with the Brotherhood anymore, so she has to go and make her own way in the world, I'm about to abandon her so that I can go and do more work for the Brotherhood, who I'm going to be helping out an awful lot. Sorry about that, Veronica. So, she nips off back to the 188. We'll be grabbing her again later, but, uh, yes indeed. There's one more thing I want to do for the Brotherhood, because that leads into another thing that is really rather damn cool, very rarely seen, and I would bet good money less than 1% of you have ever seen before, once again. Time to make our way over to the Boomers, which, uh, yeah, is gonna be tricky. Because I've got very little health, that's the biggest problem, of course. It's not the fact enemies are massively tough on very hard, it's quite manageable. But, with only 170 hit points on account of endurance of two, yeah, you die pretty damn fast. 
So, guns away, light armor on to maximize my speed, and oh, bloody hell, okay, bit, bit too close, bit too close there. That's absolutely fine, everything's under control, because don't forget what I picked up a little while ago, it was, hang on, two doses of turbo. So we're just going to do some of that to make the world basically go in slow motion while I just run at speed. Turbo wears off, so I'm just going to do a second dose right there. And as a result of that, I'm basically running at super speed right now. So I can pretty much just outrun the artillery barrage. And by the time the second dose wears off, there we go. I am to the fence. It's pretty much the safest way to bypass the barrage. I know you're supposed to like go house to house, but honestly, just because explosions and physics are wonky in this generation of Fallout, the safest way is just to do double turbo. So uh, I'd say that's definitely uh, a good call right there. Right, take me to Pearl. I need to stop Valare because there's a really fun little thing for this character waiting for me there. So, now we're inside Nellis and Valare's begun. So I'm basically allowed to help or not help as I want. That this place is uh, brilliant for looting in terms of money fast. Because there is just huge amounts of combat armor flipping everywhere. There's some combat armor immediately. And I tell you what, DT of 15, I will not say no. In fact, because we've actually got that and I've already actually done the monorail... At this point, I can just dump the leather armor, dump the face wrap, go straight over to that. So I've actually made a saving in overall weight there, I believe. Because NCR armor is pretty bloody heavy. Yeah, that's 26. And I was also carrying around 15 in leather. So that is definitely for the better. And there is so, so much leather armor floating around. How the hell am I detected? By who? There's nobody cocking here. She can't see through walls game. Here's the important one, though. Ignore all the main quests. All of that's for nothing. What I want instead is uh, the medical tent. Here we go. Nellis Medical Station. Just uh, two shelters down from Pearl's office. Because in here, we've got a bunch of people who were injured by the recent whole problem with ants and explosive and fire-breathing ants and diddly diddly dee. So naturally, I'm going to help because that's what Pearl asked me to do. But John, I hear you cry. You're an idiot who's never significantly invested in medicine whatsoever. Well, don't you worry, because the game's got a special something set aside just for me. Okay, so first I need permission to do a bit of work on these guys. And fortunately, I can talk my way into doing that. One copy of Meeting People later. And I do indeed assume the antitibular nasties pierce the patient's anterior traxes. Well, I don't know, actually. I suppose it's possible. You should take a look. And I will indeed do precisely that, good sir, for I am an expert doctor man. But there's one final piece of the puzzle too, which is what makes this one of the most obscure hidden bits of New Vegas I think I've ever seen. Which is, you also need to be holding, hang on, just uh, hide over here for a second and just hide, hide. Who on earth is bloody sneak? My bloody sneak being too bloody low to... Okay, you need to just go away for a second, all right? I need this... I need this cocking knife. It just took a terrifyingly large amount of time to get this knife because my sneak is so damn low he could basically just see me through the walls, which I assume is what was happening with Pearl earlier. It's not that she's got x-ray vision, it's just that I'm so damn unsubtle, characters can effectively just figure out what I'm doing, even if they can't see me. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much permanently detected even when I'm, you know, behind him by some distance. But now I have got intelligence under three. I am a holding a bladed object and I've talked to him into letting me do the medicine, even though I don't have any medicine skill. And if all of those things are true, then this guy here, the only one in the middle row, there is a special option for him. So we can leave him alone, attempt to treat him. Bad idea, he will die. But I can just declare Chop, chop, chop. This man requires amputation. I'm going to flipping amputate. Enthusiastically, in fact. You pull out your blade and hack blindly at the leg. After a series of random and frenetic cuts, you notice the leg is looking better. It looks like you'll be able to keep it after all. Now I know what they mean by dumb luck. And yes, indeed, there we go. The doctor even acknowledges it there. That was literally pure dumb luck. 
That, to my mind, is probably the most obscure low intelligence check in the entirety of New Vegas, and one of the most obscure events full stop, because very few characters have low intelligence, because intelligence is so critical. Then you've got to actually talk this guy to say you do medicine, even if you know you can't do the medicine. And if you speak to this character without a bladed weapon out, it simply doesn't trigger. You have to be holding a bladed weapon, otherwise you can't do it. So... Bloody hell, that's really, really obscure. But isn't it wonderful that New Vegas has stuff that damn obscure in it? It's, it's just beautiful. But yeah, sorry. Um, good luck with the rest of the patients, by the way. Nothing I could do with them. The reduction in me being bombed, however, the whole lack of artillery thing means I can get to the second Brotherhood Patrol right flipping here. Here we go. Poor exploded Brotherhood. And actually, T-51B power armor. Last time I ran to these guys, yeah, it was the, uh, the old-fashioned type instead. So that's nice. And, uh, okay. Slight problem. Can't carry all of this. Okay, uh, do some, uh, do some drugs. How many drugs do I have on me? Strength plus two. That should be enough, right? Not quite. Okay, wash down the steroids with, like, a whiskey or something. There we go. Beautiful. Right, now to go sell that lot. And in fact, selling that to the gunrunners pretty much gets me back the thousand caps I just had to give that child who said they wanted to go to Mick and Ralph's. Mick and Ralph do actually have, yeah, real guns. And that kid was chasing around his friend Stacy with a fake gun. Now he's got the money too. Okay, so Stacy's going to die. Got it. One thing this nonsense has revealed to me, however, is, uh, yeah, I'm lacking in two things in particular. Money and the ability to not be spotted by every enemy within a mile of me. So, uh, luckily, I know precisely where to go to sort out both of those problems. Back to Novak once again. We just can't bloody get away from this place, can we? Because we need to do uh, Come Fly With Me, which is going to be, yeah, based on what I've been learning this episode, uh, more difficult than I actually thought it was going to be. Because ghouls generally aren't too difficult to just, you know, snipe out. But I'm suspecting what's about to happen is, uh, yeah, they're going to detect me before I even bloody see them. Here we go, we're in caution for, did I just see your head? Yes, this, this just isn't going to fly. Got it. Well, that's absolutely fine because uh, basic feral ghouls, not so bad. As long as it's basics and not like roamers, and it definitely won't be reavers. Your glowing one might be a bit of a problem, but I should just be able to mow these guys down. If anything, I'll go over to, yeah, the service rifle first. Ideally, I'd love to have some hollow point ammo, but I just do not have hollow point ammo. Because, yeah, nice thing about ghouls, of course, is no armor, no damage threshold. Basically, they just go down nice and easy. So, actually, now I think about it, no, the service rifle is pretty good, but the 10 millimeter. I'm just sitting on ammo for that thing, and actually, the 10mm is going to tear through these guys, uh, no problem whatsoever. For the most part, rapid fire weapons are not so good in New Vegas, because you're taking on a lot of enemies who are humans, humans are wearing armor, damage threshold really mitigates the usefulness of rapid fire weapons. So unlike in Fallout 3, rapid fire machine guns, not so good, but against ghouls, uh, no, 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 these guys are back to being king. And this place is just flipping loot central as well. Just this tiny area before you even get to the actual area proper. Yeah, you got yourself some drugs. You've got yourself ammo boxes coming out the wazoo. I tell you what, I won't say no to frag grenades. Because even if I'm not using them, I can sell them. And that's where this area starts getting interesting. Because there's a lot of stuff which I might not need to actually utilise. But... If I just sell it, and you know what, mines are actually genuinely very, very useful indeed. So yeah, this could be, this could be an excellent spot for me to visit for some money. Plus, of course, never forget the lovely, convenient chessboard played with literal money. I'll be having all of that. When I say chess, probably checkers, to be honest. Probably checkers, yes. My goodness, a rare sight here. I've actually got enemies who I've seen before they've detected me. What the bloody hell? Unfortunately, at this range, yeah, the only sniping weapon I've got, well, sniping in inverted commas, is, uh, yeah, the BB gun. But the flipping spread on this thing is so bad, I really doubt I can uh, hit anything at this range. The spread is just too poor, and also they, uh, they know. They now know. While they're in danger, sneak attacks won't work. 
You know what? It's fine. We'll just go over to rapid fire. It'll be okay. In fact, you know what it could be? If those two guys want to hang out close by to each other... Okay, just wait for them to calm down for a second. Uh, if you two would like to just stand... Uh, yeah, right about there, actually. That'd be good. So just transmit that. And that is why this weapon is sometimes pretty bloody hilarious. In fact, I'll say, the splash radius has kind of surprised me. No, it wasn't the splash radius. I thought that was a bit ambitious. Yeah, it triggered that car to explode and that took out this guy. That'd be why this guy died as well. That's why we got three for the price of one there. But yeah, now unfortunately, until tomorrow, this thing ain't doing a thing. And it is very useful sometimes, because if nothing else, it can sort of like, you know, if you like, shoot around corners. Because if I just aimed up there, the beam would come down, even though I don't have line of sight to that area. I mean, I could do the same thing with my grenade rifle, but it does feel more badass to call down a satellite strike. It must be set. And then, yeah, look at that. The 10mm tears these guys apart. No problem whatsoever. Another guy coming over here. If we can just take out the legs and... Hang on, did you just say... Did I just see a flipping shield? That must have been me, not him. I really hope so, anyway. Right, you can just go down. Two guards over there. And more flipping ammo boxes. Because this area is just swimming in ammo boxes. So I can help myself to all sorts of useful bits and pieces. But more importantly, the bodies. This is why I'm here. The dead ghouls. The bright brotherhood. Because these guys, if you're very, very lucky indeed, can be holding... Plasma weaponry. So this thing is heavy, but look at that value. 500. Even with a weight of 8, that's really good weight to value ratio. And these guys are just flipping everywhere. More flipping ammo boxes over here as well. Leave the flame of fuel though. We don't need that. Always take the micro fusion cells. Money to actually start using the, uh, yeah, the plasma rifle that I've got. Purely for no reason other than the fact that, uh, yeah, unfortunately the ammo's weighing me down. Another one. Okay, this is good. This is very, very good indeed. Though, I say this, I'm already overweight capacity. I've not even got inside yet. Okay, this is... this is good. Okay, you, I'm gonna leave you in control of my shovel. Take care of this for a second. And as I've not even stepped inside yet, fast travel away, sell those two rifles. Uh, there we go. I apparently do indeed run Bart Town. Straight back over, 2,000. Love it. And don't forget those grenades, want to be selling them too, because honestly, grenades in this game are kind of garbage. Mines have their place, mines are very useful, but uh, grenades, uh, honestly, they're just good for selling. Right, back to the test site, go over to the Q35, because apparently I need to be burning this thing's ammo, otherwise I'm just going to be getting more and more weighed down by that nonsense. Because, uh, yeah, 230 spare microfusion cells and hardcore modes... Uh, Bad news. That means 23 weight just in that. And of course, we've got a few more problems. Yeah, like all the ghouls inside. But yeah, two shots from this thing uh, will put them down. Okay, reason number two I'm here. As apparently I can't flipping sneak for Toffee. Seriously, this run has given me such a renewed appreciation for the sneak skill. I didn't realise it was this bad at low sneak levels. Uh, yeah, stealth boys. I'll be needing some flipping stealth, boys. And you have got yourself laser rifle. Not so valuable, but oh, bloody hell. I mean, I'm not going to turn down microfusion cells, but bear in mind, uh, that weighs half what the bloody laser rifle does. In fact, I'm going to leave that for on my way out. Remember that's there on the way out. I'm not taking it yet. I don't actually need the ammo. Now, I'm not necessarily going to go for literally every single ghoul. I might miss one or two, but I know where a fair few are. Oh, and four Sunset Sarsaparilla there. I will just literally down those immediately, because uh, why wouldn't you get lucky? Maybe a handful of star bottle caps. There's one right there. Flipping love it. So that's another one for the pile. Yeah, take a right. Watch out for the traps, because before they died, the Bride Brotherhood did indeed actually trap this place up. And that leads me straight over to... Hang on, where... Okay, now we're getting to the stage where I don't even bloody know where they are. They're actually detecting me before I even know they exist. Oh, there you are. Hello, you just hold still. Oh, is there a second one? Okay, there's a second one. One of you's a Roma as well. That's fine. Now I've got my energy scale a little bit higher. We should be able to take you out without too much... 
That was 95% chance to hit. How did you mess up this badly? Luckily, with my new combat armor, this is not so bad, all things considered. But bloody hell, that I just walked straight into the... <laughs> straight to the trap. That's good. Well done. Well done, mate. Okay, this, this is good. This is precisely how this was supposed to go. Just run straight through a bear trap on my way out again. As I was saying, dead ghoul number... What's that? Three? If I recall correctly. Okay. That's another laser rifle. So, leave it for now. I'm going to prioritize picking up the plasma stuff, if I can. So just take another right here, another one right here. There's the plasma rifle. That's the stuff I really want to be seeing. That's the crucial stuff. Okay, they're definitely detecting me all over the shop here. All over the shop, like from miles away. I've not even seen the next ones yet, but... Okay, we're good. Right, yeah, for some reason there seemed to be a whole bunch of them in a line over here. Possibly this is the hello over there. Yes, you've detected me straight away. That's fine, you can just uh, die whenever you're ready to. There you flipping go. Alright, Sunset's Asparilla's worn off. That's all A-OK. -okay. There's some more right here. Because bear in mind, every 10 shots with the Q35, that's one weight out of my inventory. It's slightly ludicrous, and that's another four weight right there. I'll take the medicine... I'll take that too, because otherwise I'll forget about it, but, uh, for the most part. Okay, things seem quiet for now. Do not forget, yes, the doors are around here. And this door we can now do immediately. And this room is super important, because this room is, uh, yeah, the Stealth Boy room. Double flipping Stealth Boy in the safe. The door and the safe are both easy locked. So yeah, even a really weak character like Useless Steve, if he can just get himself up to a 25 lockpick or 15 with a locksmith's reader, and I've got five of those right now, can get that open. Though I shouldn't have picked up those uh, microfusion cells because now I literally can't move. Okay, just take the edge off with a quick whiskey. I'm addicted to whiskey, that's fine, we can sort that out later. And uh, use that newfound whiskey strength to hunt down a couple of ghouls that we can shoot with the plasma rifle. Then everything will be okay. There we go, handful more roamers and whatnot, but yeah, now I've actually got myself proper combat armor. They just can't penetrate it. So, uh, yeah, I will say, if you can, just grab it a couple of turbo, or if you're feeling lucky, just, you know, saving and trying until you pull it off. Just run straight to the flipping boomers in the early game. There is so much not particularly well-guarded combat armor there. Just floating around for free in containers that have no locks on them. Uh, yeah, it's definitely worth doing, because early game combat armor is... Uh, Really, really damn strong. And you've spotted me. Luckily, you're going to do a stupid roar before you actually bother, you know, attacking me or whatever. So, you can just go down. Where's your friend gone? Right, your friend wandered over there. That's fine. A couple of... Excuse me, where's... You guys okay? There you go. You figured it out. Also, that was a bad time to, to need to reload. Right, just um, close the door for a second. Right, we're ready to go now. Right, anytime you're ready. Because a couple of shots in the head should see you... Okay, not quite right, but keep on hammering. There you go. Third one, I'll do the job. And get myself some extra XP for killing an enemy with energy weapons. Lovely. I think this might be the first ever time I've seriously basically just skipped guns and gone to energy weapons in the early game as my primary way of uh, defending myself, which is a fun change of pace. Oh, lucky drop here in an ash pile. Stealth boy. Now, that's not guaranteed. You're definitely not guaranteed to actually be finding uh, stealth boys on the corpses. The one on the front door, that one's... Okay, now I'm just getting stupid lucky. That is definitely not there every time. Especially as I'm not even done with the guaranteed ones yet. So don't forget to uh, head upstairs, make your way to the CEO's office. Because he's definitely got one too, though. Is his locked in a safe that's, that's average locked? Yeah, I think his might be in, in that safe. So sadly, I cannot get in there. Unless, of course, by any chance I can open it with this terminal. And no, tragically not. Though this does get me the password to the storage room down in the basement, so that's useful at least. Alright, so that's one stealth boy we're not getting yet anyway. But honestly, a haul of, what is it, five so far? That's more than I was hoping for anyway, so honestly I'm happy with that. May as well just uh, crack on to the main mission at this point. Okay, I need more strength. I'm going to do a little bit of buff out here just so I can actually start picking up these uh, laser rifles. So I don't want to have to pick them up later.
Right, into the Bright camp. Obviously, have a nice chat with Jason Bright. He'll tell me, go down to the basement, clear out the monsters, diddly diddly day. Dealing with the Nightkin is not necessarily going to be uh, the easiest thing, though. Ideally, I'd just sneak around them, talk to Davison, sort that situation out nice and peaceful. But, uh, yeah, based on what I've seen so far, I feel like it's going to be borderline impossible for me to actually, you know, sneak around all the Nightkin without them all rushing me, because they'll detect me immediately. I mean, I'd love to maybe just use a stealth boy. Just for safety. I mean, I do have more than I was expecting, to be honest. And I don't want to fight with these guys. I really don't. You know what? I'm going to do it. I need to actually burn some weight anyway, so why not? There we go. Oh dear, that's... I'm going to be honest. I could be stealthier right now, but that doesn't really count for anything. That's a lovely effect, by the way. My beautiful wibbly rifle. Just check he's not in the corridor right now. Okay. Not in the corridor. Good, good, good. So they will not detect me. Straight over to here. Speak to Davison. Sort out their problems. No issue whatsoever. And yes, indeed, the Night King wants Stealth Boys. Now, admittedly, I've been picking up Stealth Boys from all over. But there is no solution to this quest where you simply say, Here, have some Stealth Boys. We do know there was originally going to be an alternative solution to this quest where there were going to be more ghouls held prisoner down in his basement where if you could actually give them Stealth Boys, they could sneak out. But it never made it into the, uh, the final game. In fact, there's a bunch of interesting stuff about this quest that never really kind of made it into the final game. I will discuss that in a minute, in fact. But yes, for the time being, they want Stealth Boys. Boys, just need to actually get the stockpile from the final room. No problem whatsoever. Right, crack that open. Hello over there. You're going to try and do me a deal or I find your dead girlfriend inside the prison. Then you'll leave. But unfortunately, uh, no, that's that's not really my plan today. So uh, sorry about this. But, you know, needs must. Lots of traps in here too. Like, say, concealed mines. But I can't do anything with, uh, with them right now. Or with... That either, actually. Basically, I can't do anything with anything for the time being. So just sneak around all of this nonsense. There's, yeah, more mines there. It's easier to see when you've got your Pip-Boy light on. So, can't step on any of that. Tripwire over here. More mines right there. Okay. As I can see the mines, go over to something nice and cheap. Like, say, a 9mm pistol. That'll do, because yeah, we can just uh, detonate the mines and thereby artificially uh, trigger the bear traps just by taking all of that out. So uh, that's all some nice stuff right there. Stealth boys worn off, but that's fine. We're done with that nonsense. I see you guys right over there. Lovely. I do like how this room has actually been like, you know, intelligently trapped. Choke points. Traps are focused around there, right in front of a first aid box. So someone might walk over to that. I'm now back over to uh, poor weight capacity. Dear, oh, flipping dear. Rebound. I'll take some of that. Okay, do another whiskey. That's fine. I'm addicted to the stuff. So probably a good thing, to be honest. Can't actually do that either. Never actually checked. Can you shoot these things? Yes, yes, you can. So that's that taken care of. A rig shotgun. Obviously can't do anything with that. The terminal. Obviously that's not a real terminal. That's a trap as well. There are many traps in this part of the world. Including that one that I almost just uh, walked into. Luckily the blast radius on these are really, really small. Poor old Harland. But uh, yeah, sadly... I didn't want to have to try and sneak past all of those guys with, yeah, burning stealth boys and no sneak. Would have been not a fun time. So, poor Harlan does very often die. Good guaranteed source of a hunting rifle in the early game, by the way. Might well be the first one you come across. Because, uh, yeah, hunting rifle was kind of garbage in Fallout 3. New Vegas, really damn solid. Also, not bad in terms of weight to value ratio. Oh, bloody hell. Anyway, nice and fast, please. Nice and fast, because I'm desperately running out of weight here. This terminal here tells me, actually, there were, in fact, no stealth boys whatsoever. Or rather, they were, but they were sent back. Apart from the ones that various members of staff, like the CEO and whoever actually owned that safe, decided to uh, keep for themselves. Very sneaky bastards. Oh, I just accidentally uh, triggered someone. Someone spotted me. Davison, we need to chat right now. We need to chat right the flip now. Please take your guys and leave before they beat me to death. Okay, has that got that guy too? Good. That guy calmed down. That was... That was precisely the guy I didn't want to detect me, then he sort of did. So, now, back up to Jason. You may notice, by the way, in this quest, there's a lot of, um, 
running up and down stairs. Like, now I've got to go all the way back up to Jason. Then he wants me to run all the way back down here. Then further down into the basement. Then they send me back up into the wasteland. Then back over here. There's a lot of kind of fairly needless back and forth in this quest. There's a lot of just running through empty space. Then at the end, you have to run back through the whole building to help launch rockets again. This is actually because, and uh, Joshua has confirmed this, this was the first major quest they actually worked on. So uh, as a result of that, it's a little bit inelegant next to some of the others. There's plenty of later quests they developed when they had a lot more experience, a lot more familiarity with the engine, which is why this quest is not the best in the game for, yeah, a lot of needless padding. And yeah, after reporting into uh, Jason, he just runs straight back down to the room where you were, and you have to follow him, and just go straight back down to the exact same area. Luckily, the next bit of the mission actually works pretty darn nicely for me, which is I need to nip back into town and grab some stuff. By the way, space helmet, valuable, doesn't actually weigh anything. The spacesuit does weigh something, but it's not terrible armor for the early game. Honestly, I'd still just rush to the boomers, but if you don't want to rush to the boomers, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Decent rad resistance, not terrible damage threshold. So step one, I can actually sell some of this stuff I've been carrying around. Hunting rifle, plasma rifle, very, very nice indeed. Easy 500 caps. Though once again, if you're willing to make the run to the boomers, yeah, combat armor's worth a lot of money and there is so much of it just sitting around over there. But there's another reason you actually want to nip by to the shop anyway, which is, yeah, we have to go get some rocket fuel. Now that does sometimes involve a bit of a dangerous trip to some golden geckos or something, or you can just actually uh, rob this guy blind. Because, yeah, there's rocket souvenirs and they glow in the dark because they've got the radioactive isotope in them. So, five will do the job. There we go. That should be enough radioactive isotope to actually sort that out too. But yes, that's why you want to kind of nip back here mid-quest. And as for Old Lady Gibson up the road, for the actual other component of the modules, yeah, Barter 50, Speecher 50, or Lockpick 50 to steal them, I can't do any of the above. So... I very much doubt I can pickpocket anything off her, just because, yes, there's dogs everywhere and my stealth is appalling, so screw it, 500 camps, not so bad. Another odd thing about this quest, of course, even though you have to find two components and there's nothing to stop you gathering both of them at the same time, the game does actually tell you in terms of, yeah, the quest markers, go, find one, bring it back, collect the other one, go, grab that, bring it back. So, again, a slightly inelegant early quest. And there we go, modules handed over, and as for the isotope, how about the rocket souvenirs, my good man? Yes, that's isotope 239, all right. And there's enough here to launch the rockets. All right, job flipping done. So now, of course, for Chris's betrayal, because they've been lying to him, telling him he's a ghoul, and apparently mirrors don't work in this universe. Unfortunately, no speech check is required to make Chris just uh, go in Novak, so he can enjoy a lovely life over there. He does actually uh, move into the motel. I believe he shares Manny's room with him. And Manny is canonically either gay or bisexual. You can actually confirm bachelor him. So I assume Chris is the same, and I hope they have a lovely life together. And so begins another very, very long walk through the facility to go and do one more bit of busy work, actually just pushing a button up on the top floor. Yes, as I say, inelegant little quest, this one. Still, chance to pick up a stealth boy down inside the actual night canary, if you forgot it before, in their food area. One right on the table there. So that is... Uh, hang on, is that four guaranteed two I've just picked up by chance? I believe so. Also, is that Brahmin steak? I'll take a Brahmin steak. That there is plus strength without the risk of addiction. Fun final twist, by the way, for my particular character once again. While I could just uh, push the launch button, yes indeed, there's a navigation console. If your science and technology and whatever is good enough, you can, of course, optimize their route, which makes you a nice person. If, however, you're dumb, you can simply mash on the keys. You don't think you accomplish much, but you do feel better. So that's nice. You can also continue mashing on the keys, but eventually you break the console, and that is actually bad. So screw it, we'll do it anyway, then I'll actually revert to a previous save, because I'd feel bad if we did that. So there we go, didn't accomplish much, didn't accomplish much. There we go. Oops, you're not sure what you just did, but it probably isn't good. So as a result of that, the console, well, it makes an exploding noise but doesn't explode, and I've lost some karma. Actually, now I'm really curious, does that actually make the rockets, uh, crash? I don't know, I'm going to find out. So we're just gonna open up the actual thing. I've just broken the navigation computer. That's probably bad. Guys, 
I'm really sorry about whatever's about to happen. And, uh, yeah. Here we go. Nicely opens up there. Are they actually going to take off or are they going to... Okay. They didn't crash. I'm going to take that as a win. So, that's fine. The console can just remain broken. And, if I recall correctly, this quest has a lot of XP. Novak is thrilled. Yep, 900 right there. Straight up to level 8. I've had halfway to level 9. Love it. And really love to invest in Sneak, you know. I've got such a renewed appreciation for this stat. It's just awful what I've got going on right now. But... I could start accessing average locked doors if I went for lockpick. But, on the other hand, if I just get up to 35, that's... That's good. Speech is good. Speech of 35, that's up to 45 with meeting people. I mean, that's... that's nice. Yeah, sneak, you can be 18, speech 35. Energy weapons are 30 is... Holding for the time being, especially with the advantage of having a decent plasma rifle. And speaking of rifles, yeah, Commando is available, which is... Uh, that's nice. That's tempting. That's very, very tempting indeed. What are the other options here? Sneering Imperialist. That's not great, to be honest. I would like Commando. Commando is nice, but... No. I think what we need to do instead is we're way too squishy right now. Admittedly, with the new armor, it's not so bad. But I can't take another implant unless I've actually got another point in endurance. So that's what we're going to do. Endurance of three. Just because, if nothing else, I want the extra hit points. Oh, and one final bit of inelegance in this quest, by the way. Even though I'm kind of, you know, pretty outside all things considered. You can't fast travel from this location. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah. Have to walk all the way back through the facility one last time. Right, and on the way out, don't forget the last of the actual corpses here. The ones I passed by earlier. So, uh, okay. That Brahmin state's going to be very bloody useful, actually. Get up to, uh, yeah, 180 on the old strength. That gets me... Oh, bloody hell. I do want the ammo. The ammo's are arguably the most useful bit. Because that just means I can keep using this weapon for days and days and days. So, yeah, just head around this way. I'm pretty sure you guys had some uh, laser rifles on you. That's good. One more, I believe, that I ignored previously. Possibly it was... Uh, no, you were the plasma. I think you're the laser. Hang on. I never went to check out you before, did I? And you've got... Oh, you do have the plasma. Great. Okay, that laser rifle's not worth much. Merge them together. So I'm losing a bit of value, but not so much. And just check down this way as well. Yep, thought so. One more over here. That's another laser. Or I could just take the microfusion cells. Screw it. Start merging all of these together. I'd rather have, uh, yeah, the microfusion cells than anything else. We may as well just improve this. That's increased the value by like 100. It was worth 200 or so on its own. So it's not so bad. Then again, I could actually use... Wouldn't mind improving this. You know what? Why not? Let's just make sure my Q35 is in basically the best shape it can be in. Right, one more here. Yet more microfusion cells, because that's the real price here. Which I wasn't expecting. I know I came in saying, oh, we'll pick up stealth boys and weapons. No, turns out ammo's the real winner here. And I just managed to get out and fast travel before the state wore off, meaning I can just travel straight here to the gun runners. Right, all that nonsense later. I've actually got myself, yeah, 3,000 caps, and also I'm uh, almost awake capacity, because, yeah, I've picked up the extra stealth boys. Uh, and I'm carrying, like, 50 weight just in microfusion cells, which is uh, not good. Not good at all. Also, I'm addicted to something. So, Strauss, help me out, please. Right, whiskey addiction got rid of. Absolutely lovely. Okay, I need to, uh, yeah, just go and uh, store these microfusion cells somewhere. It's good that we've got them all in one place. Just that place needs to be uh, not on my person. I normally use Easy Pete's house for that, and actually, to be honest, it's not really Easy Pete's house anymore, because he's definitely dead. Sorry about that, I am still uh, wearing the hat, by the way. But, uh, okay. Tim the Scorpion appears to have moved out of town, because the Big Horners are not panicking. Okay, well, this is good news. 
And also, Cheyenne is one, not dead, and two, her eyes are actually located inside her face, so things are going really well today in Good Springs. Right, my favourite safe storage spot in the game, the Foot Locker inside Easy Pete's house. So, yeah, we can definitely be uh, dropping off some stuff we don't need uh, right here. So, say, uh, half of the BB stuff, that's good, that barely weighs anything, to be honest, there's barely even any points storing that. But yeah, 300 odd weight in microfusion cells, uh, 30 weight. That's a load off my shoulders, literally. I'll store some energy cells away too. We don't necessarily need all of this. And yeah, energy stuff is very, very heavy indeed. So that's going to be much better. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so and while I'm actually revisiting town, now I've actually got enough lockpick. May as well help myself to even more stealth, boys. There's another one right flipping here in the school. And may as well use my plasma rifle at the same time. That's an impenetrable barrier, isn't it, you lucky bastard? Right, down you flipping go. Okay, everyone dead, everyone dead, love it. Yeah, I believe these are easy and easy, so that is, yeah, one free bobby pin, that's easy, that's easy too. I don't think I can do the easy computer, but I can do the safe. There we go, stealth boy and some money, love it. Yeah, even with Programmer's Digest, I still can't do uh, science easy, marvellous. Still, six stealth boys now, that's a good place to be. Alright, I've now finally got myself some genuinely damn solid armour, I've got a good gun, it's in good condition, and I've got so much ammo for it, I can't even bear the weight of the stuff. So, actually, we're finally in a pretty good spot. Aside from, yeah, the ongoing problem of uh, money, together with still only being level 8, meaning I've probably just about caught up with where I would be at level 1, had I actually not been doing this ridiculous experiment. Maybe a tiny bit behind, but we're getting there. We're getting into the same sort of uh, a ballpark. So I would say, next week, ladies and gentlemen, let's actually focus on two things. One, making an absolute ton of money to be made... Uh, a bit of money from Repcon, but it's not really like, you know, the real golden egg. There's a lot of good ways to make money in this game that aren't gambling. So uh, we'll go and take care of that. And two, XP. I want to get a few more levels under my belt. And in New Vegas, not all quests are created equal. There are some quests that are really difficult to do that provide almost no XP. And some quests that provide a ridiculously large amount of XP that can actually be done by even very basic characters. So how about we have a discussion about that next week, ladies and gentlemen? Because that might be of interest to a few of you. Because, yeah, if you've got yourself a very low-level character, there are some missions that are really, really damn easy to do, but yield a ridiculous amount of XP. So let's talk about how we do those next week. Get ourselves a few more skill points under my belt. Now that, that'll be damn good. Hopefully you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout New Vegas with The Worst Courier. Thank you very much and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here. And then we have got a... I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you mooing bastards! Die! Die! Go! Go away. Go away. Nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.